I got some bad news for those of you who like this channel and the videos that we've been making. So I wanted to sit down with you in an unedited way and just share what's been going on. I'm currently in Rio, which is why I have this weird setup, but this is the last video of the 90 day goal series and a chapter is ending. I also wanna share some big realizations that I've had this year in general to hopefully make this valuable for you. Let's cut right to the painful part. I'm no longer going to be making these videos. And there's many reasons why. I've thought about it a lot. I've considered this even a year ago, but I wanted to give this more of a shot and just say, hey, 2023, I'm just gonna dive in and keep trying, but um, this chapter is ending. First of all, I don't think there is the content market fit that I've been looking for. When I started this channel, I wanted to make something unique where I'm not just talking about something, but I'm combining entertainment and experiences with valuable lessons and self-improvement. Where I actually show me going through an experience like with the Navy SEAL video or doing the brain training, and then hopefully you find something valuable in it too. So first of all, the ratio between inputs and outputs is completely off. The input is very high. It takes a ton of work to make these videos. Sometimes we fly out for a video to spend time with an interesting person. Weeks scripting and editing and selecting music and putting so much work into this well-crafted storyline. Sometimes we have 15 hours of footage trying to get it into 15 minutes. And what we're getting out, the output, is sometimes decent views, sometimes very low, 30,000 views. And you can't run a business like that. It's very volatile. And when you upload one video a month or two videos a month, it's very difficult because if you have two videos that flop, you're in financial trouble. Another output is how valuable it is for the viewer. And some of it just isn't that valuable, even though it takes so much time to make it, making a much simpler video would be way more valuable. Like for example, the last one that I put out where I was just at home and I was sharing something I had recently learned and people thought, wow, this was the most valuable video of the year. That was a common sentiment. It's difficult to make an entertaining video. It's difficult to make a video where you teach something. A video where you entertain the viewers and you show yourself going through an experience and you also add lessons to it, that is incredibly difficult. My hypothesis was that if I do self-improvement and I make it entertaining, where I'm going through the experience and I'm documenting it, and I craft a story around it, it's gonna have broader appeal, more people will get into self-improvement, and we can be in between mainstream and self-improvement, instead of just be self-improvement. I think people either wanna be entertained primarily, or they primarily want to learn. They either wanna watch a comedian and just shut their brain off completely, or they wanna to listen to Alex Homozi, just spit and fire. And sure, you can do it still in an entertaining way. Where we position ourselves, it's too volatile. Sometimes it can work, but is it sustainable? Is it the most valuable it can be for the viewer? Is it the most enjoyable? Absolutely not. Sounds like an easy solution to just hire an editor. We've been trying and looking for someone for, I can say now, over a year or even two years. Yeah, technically two years. Over a thousand applications, I would say. And it's been very hard for me because I've been making content and then also hiring someone feels like a part-time job. It takes a lot of time and focus and dedication while then also making these videos. And um, it's, uh, it's rough. Another output that's also not where I want it to be is how much I'm enjoying these videos because it is soul crushing at times. So I'm not just saying this because oh, the views are up and down. If I loved making these videos, I would continue. It's not something I wanna continue doing long-term, so why continue doing it now? Does it mean that you'll never see me again and that the Driven community is no more? Absolutely not. There's a new chapter coming. I've always wanted to make a podcast on the site where I can go deeper, I can upload more often, I can show up consistently besides the main channel. And I put out a few episodes, but that never really came to be because the main channel just took so much focus. But next year, that'll be the primary focus. Maybe there's still gonna be vlogs on this channel that maybe somebody else films and edits with me and we show some behind the scenes of how we're building Driven and the podcast and the community and you know we wanna get a creative hub in Austin going and all that can be documented potentially. Nothing set in stone, I make no promises. I've made that mistake before because things are always changing. The previous video, for example, about this idea makes you unstoppable, about the winner effect. It was by far the video I spent the least time on. Just me sitting at home talking about some ideas that I was thinking about. It got the most views out of the last 10 videos in the first seven day period. And so many people said, this is the most valuable video that they've seen from me this year. Oh, oopsie. <laughs> Could have saved myself some work and time. And the podcast is gonna be more of that. Going deeper, showing up a lot more often, and I can finally talk about all the things that I wanna talk about and I don't have to think about, well, we only upload one video this month, maybe two, so what's the right packaging? And 
that do we have a good title and thumbnail for that? Because there's so many things that I want to touch on or share or that I'm thinking about that I can't get into because the packaging isn't right. What's going to be the story? What will make this interesting? What will make this visually appealing? Well, the podcast, easy peasy. It's going to be on YouTube as well, on Spotify. And that's something that I can do for the next 10 years easily. And I've had a bunch of friends tell me, hey, you know, podcasts is it's actually very difficult. It's competitive. I'm like, bro, podcast compared to what I've been doing is easy mode. Cool bonus is that YouTube is actually also focusing more on podcasts and long form content. So great. It seems like everything is pointing in that direction. And with it, the driven community is going to continue to grow. That's the first big realization. Another big one is tapping into intuition. By intuition, I mean just your gut feeling. It's not some woo-woo stuff. It's simply, I don't know why, but this feels right. This feels like the right thing. And this is actually one of the reasons why I'm here in Rio. I woke up in the middle of the night and I was like, hey, I should fly to Rio for New Year's Eve. And I did that, even though I didn't have this video finished yet. I usually would have wanted to script it out perfectly. I don't, maybe you notice, maybe you don't. And I just booked a flight to Rio the next day. And then now I'm here. And lo and behold, there's all these friends here in Rio and it's a phenomenal trip without any planning. What prompted this? I've always been someone who's very analytical and in his head, which comes with many benefits, right? I'm very good at planning things. I'm good at noticing patterns. I'm good at thinking about things, I guess, just thinking. But it comes with many downsides too, where it stops you from taking action. It stops you from just going with the flow. And you miss out on serendipitous moments where you just talk to a stranger without having a reason for it. And they end up becoming your business partner or life partner. And I've always had to have a clear plan for everything that I'm doing and a good reason why. Instead of just listening to that feeling like, "Ah, I feel like I should do this, it just feels right. It seemed dumb to me. Like, why would you do that? Like, that's just an excuse for you wanting to do things that are easy. But I think the subconscious brain is figuring out, and this is again, me analyzing it and making sense of things instead of just trusting that it works. Your brain, your subconscious analyzes all the data that it gets and it just bubbles it up to the surface and saying like, hey, go do this, go to Rio, go to that person, stop doing these videos and make the podcast. And logically, you don't understand it, but your subconscious has already calculated the data and crunched the numbers. I have not been listening to that because I just didn't know what it was. I'm kind of figuring out, okay, what is the voice of just the ego and your fears and just excuses versus intuition? It's a subtle difference, but that's something I'm tapping into right now. And that's also tied into the all or nothing thinking that I've talked about on the channel before. I would see things very black and white. Either I focus on my business or I focus on my dating life or my social life, for example, right? And I would not be dating at all because I'd be like, hey, I'm focusing on my business right now. I don't have the time, but that's all BS. That's an easy excuse for me to not put myself out there because if there's a girl that I like, I can just go up to her and say hi. It takes two minutes. And if I'm honest, I was just afraid. Just afraid to put myself out there, to be seen, risk looking like an idiot. And then my brain comes up with a super good solution. Oh, you're just focused. You don't have time. Yes, I do have two or three minutes to go talk to this person. And that's something I'm noticing more and more now. And what becomes possible when you just go with the flow more. And it also depends on what season you're in, in your life, right? So if you've got something that works, a business or a lifestyle, and you're just like, head down, sure, build system, become very disciplined, very rigid, and just keep cranking things out. When you're in a transition period from one chapter to the next, the way I am right now, you want some chaos. You want flow and serendipity. So this is something that actually I talked to Sam Ovens about at a uh, weekend retreat that me and 10 or 15 other people went to. It was creators and entrepreneurs. And Sam Ovens, for those of you who don't know him, he's the founder of consulting.com and um, also School which is the platform that we're using to host our community. And he's been a mentor throughout my life, virtually, right? Just by watching his videos and learning from him. He said something very interesting to me, which was that the best decisions that he's made have not come from logic. They've just come from gut feeling, which is, for example, starting school. He sold consulting.com, which made no logical sense to just ditch it for this new thing that didn't have any plan around it or strategy or key insight or, you know, he just went with his feeling. It's paying off big time, but it took five years for him to see the external results that the internal feeling was promising to him. He was always known as this guy that was super rigid, super disciplined, and would meditate every day, wouldn't drink any alcohol, no consumption of social media, and now he went completely 180. He doesn't plan his days anymore. He's drinking alcohol every once in a while. He doesn't meditate anymore. And I was like, wow, how come? 
And he told me that you want some chaos in those periods where you're figuring things out. You want new data, you want new experiences and reinvent yourself. And just in general, I think for him, it's not just a phase. I think that's just what he found is best for him now, like something in between where it's not super rigid. And I see it. The things I've missed out on because of this rigid thinking, which is good. I'm not against it. I think it has its time and place, but you got to know when that time and place is. Are you currently in a phase of just head down and squeezing all the juice you have out of a fruit that you just picked up? Or are you currently in the mode of figuring out where the next fruit is? And you're just like walking around, figuring it out, right? And you need new data coming in. Another thing I've realized is that I've been liking to do things that are uncomfortable, that I'm already comfortable with. And the biggest growth is with the things that are really, really, really uncomfortable. Let me explain. We tend to pick the uncomfortable things that are actually comfortable for us. And we miss out on a ton of growth because of that. For example, somebody who's a workaholic, they would push themselves and get uncomfortable working more. Oh, it's time to push myself. But the really uncomfortable thing for that person is to just take two weeks off, do nothing, nothing. That is like, oh, I can't do that. Like just imagine all the voices that come up for you and be like, no, I, that's not even feasible. Like, I, 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 that's discomfort right there. That's where the biggest growth is for that person. For somebody who's always planning, don't know anyone who I could be, the uncomfortable thing is not to make a really good plan this time, but just go with the flow. For somebody who's super social, do a darkness retreat like I did. For seven days, you lock yourself in a room, you do nothing, or a meditation retreat where you can't talk to someone. That's where your mind and the excuses go wild. And you're like, oh, I can't do that. I, uh, uh, you know? All right, I think there's someone coming in here right now. I guess that also ties in with the next big progress that I made this year, which is that I healed my relationship with sleep. It's been a seven year struggle of insomnia, of considering myself a bad sleeper, someone who's really held back by that and it's crippling. It's a vicious cycle and I don't wish this on anybody to struggle with insomnia, where you're so tired and the more tired you get, the less you can sleep. And this year I can confidently say, because of the video that I've done and the focus that I put onto this, and the friends that I've learned from, I've healed my relationship with sleep after seven years. And the big lesson from that is just take responsibility. I always make the excuse that it's my body, it's just my brain, it's just, that's just something I struggle with, and that's just who I am, and I created this identity around it. But if I was really honest, it was simply that I wasn't doing the right steps. Now here's the thing, most people, they don't even have to do these steps to get decent sleep, but I did because I had a bad relationship with it. What are the steps? The basics. Work out, go to bed on time, and wake up at the same time. Turn your screens off before bed and wind down. Just these basic things that we already know. And whenever I was playing the victim that, oh, it's just like this thing that I struggle with and oh, why me? It was actually just, I didn't do the thing. I was on my phone too late. I didn't go to bed on time. Where does that show up in your life? Where you say you're struggling with something, but you struggling with it is just a natural consequence of the actions that you're taking. I had this with dating as well, where I'm like, oh, dating is so hard nowadays. I don't even want to get into it. And I was in no position to complain about that because I just didn't put myself out there. I was just working all the time. And if I put myself out there a little bit, it's great. How many new people did you meet this month? How often did you put yourself out there? I think that can be applied to almost any area of your life or anything you struggle with. Did you do the steps, right? You want a new client? How many people did you reach out to? Another big thing has been the lesson of deserving that I learned throughout the video with Marissa Peer, the hypnotherapist who hypnotized me, and it was very insightful. And the idea was that, for me, that's how I interpreted it, there's a difference between deserving things and earning things. Whereas I always thought you have to earn something to deserve it, but they're separate. Yes, you have to earn things, you have to do some necessary steps, but oftentimes we don't even take the simplest steps because we don't feel like we deserve something. The example I gave was with Richard Branson, who got this private island for $180,000, I think, because he offered to buy it for $100,000 when they asked for six million. They quoted him six million and he was like, how about a hundred grand? And they're like, no. And then a year later, they were desperate to sell, he got it for 180,000. He took the necessary actions. So yes, he earned it. He also got a bit lucky, yes. And because he felt like he deserved something like that, he was able and willing to take this action. Or he was even able to perceive the possibility of this. If you don't feel like you deserve the life partner that you want or the business that you want or the, the, just in general, the life that you crave, if you don't feel like you deserve it yet, maybe at some point, 
then so many doors close for you. Where else do I feel like I'm not deserving something, therefore I don't even go for it? Which again goes back to inviting serendipity back into my life. Serendipity meaning just random coincidences that are just beautiful. Serendipity meaning. Good luck in making unexpected and fortunate discoveries. And just in general, I found hypnotherapy very, very powerful and very intriguing. For anyone who says, oh, she paid you, nobody ever paid me to make a video about them. I would never get paid to make a video like that. And if I did, I would disclose it. I've actually had people offer me a, a lot of money, six figures to make a video about them. And I told them, yeah, sure, we can do it if, I, if I'm allowed to disclose that you paid me for it. And then they didn't wanna do it. I believe in hypnotherapy. I think it's very powerful and it uncovers and cracks open patterns that we've been running since our childhood. And I highly recommend it. And you don't need someone like Marissa Pia with 35 years of experience to get great results. For example, we have Christy in our driven community who's been giving sessions left and right to all the other members because we're like a little family that helps each other out. And she's been trained under Marissa Pia. I've had sessions with her, it's great. I highly recommend checking it out. I'll leave a link below for you to check it out if you have any struggle with some pattern that you wanna get rid of or you have a goal that you feel like is out of reach. I'll put a link below if anyone of you is interested in a session like that and you can get in touch with Christy. And amongst those were also smaller lessons like the importance of monetization to keep the business afloat. I almost ran out of money this year and um, it was a close call. That's something I'm considering as well. Taking on maybe a couple of clients that I help with YouTube, specifically entrepreneurs or businesses that are making already millions of dollars that want to put fuel on the fire through YouTube. That's just something that I never wanted to focus on because again, all or nothing thinking. Either I do YouTube or I do consulting, but I can't do both. Of course I can. I would love to. There's so much more I could talk about and I want to talk about and I'm going to talk about on the podcast channel. I'm probably going to make it a separate channel. Maybe it's going to be the same one, but I'm going to be taking a month off from content, which is crazy. Feels wild. I'm excited for what's next. I hope you are too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next year.